welcome to the latest episode of Resoundingly Human, the podcast brought to you by INFORMS, the leading association for professionals and students who apply science, math, technology, and analytics to make smarter decisions for a better world. I'm your host, Ashley Kay, and thank you for joining me to explore how INFORMS members are saving lives, saving money, and solving problems. My guest today is going to help us explore the fun side of data analytics. Evan Wimpy is not only an analytics professional with Elder Research, but is also a stand-up comedian. After spending years analyzing data and delivering statistical models, Evan realized that humor is often the most effective way to make dry or technical topics more accessible and more fun. Now, in addition to his analytics day job, he performs data science comedy at conferences and events around the world to include the upcoming 2024 Informs Analytics Conference, April 14th through the 16th in Orlando, Florida. Evan, thank you so much for joining me. It's great to have you on Resoundingly Human. Ashley, thanks so much for having me on the show and for relaxing your standards on what you what you count as human to be on the show. Not at all, oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, Evan, you already have me laughing. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay, let's let's close it now. Well, we're done. <laughs> That's a wrap. <laughs> all right, Evan, let's start with a little background on your analytics career. Tell us a bit about the more serious side of the work that you do. Okay, sure. Fantastic. I try to keep everything pretty light, so not too serious, um, which is funny because my background is, is in the Marine Corps. I was in the Marines before I was in analytics. Um, got out, went to school to get a master's in analytics, came here to Elder Research, which is where I work now as a data scientist. It's a bit confusing. Elder Research is, is we don't actually do Elder and we actually don't really do research either. We just founded by a guy named Dr. John Elder. That's kind of like Salmon City, like doesn't actually serve Salmon. Um, but at Elder Research as a data scientist for a few years, now my role is Director of Analytics Strategy, which is as sort of ambiguous as it sounds. But at Elder Research, we um, sort of, a, maybe this is just my tagline for us, but if you have data and you want to make decisions, we like to help you do that. And it's been around for about 30 years. So 30 years ago, you know, if you wanted an analytics consultant, we were one of one. Um, now we are one of a, a whole lot. The space has gotten a lot more dense. Our, our Mahalanobis distance has, has shrunk to our our competitors. But in the space, we, we like to think, we don't like to solve the cookie cutter problems, the plug and play problems. We like to solve the complex, the creative types of problems. And I love to get a chance to do that. I love doing that as a data scientist. And now my role is sometimes hands-on code, hands-on data, trying to deliver solutions. More often, it's sort of client engagement. How do we get solutions implemented, get things so that that folks can actually use them and and drive some better decisions. And then a lot of what I do is sort of maps closely to like a technical pre-sales role where folks that are interested in what data and analytics can do and need some help trying to think about, you know, what can the elder research team help do to drive that, trying to to build that up, to mock that up and and hopefully uh, engage some folks with some laughs when I can. So Evan, as a, a Marine Corps brat who grew up with a Marine Corps dad, I want to thank you for your service. Hoorah. All right. Yeah, hoorah. That's right. So when did you get the idea to combine humor with data and how did this evolve into your becoming a stand-up comedian? I've done a little, little bit of stand-up comedy back in the undergrad days 20 years ago. And part of my role at Elder Research, I do some teaching and I like to try to inject some humor into what's generally like like a Ben Stein economics course, like dry material. But I, I would say like sort of the light bulb went off uh, at the beginning of COVID on our internal messaging. We use Slack and somebody shared a post about a conference they were going, a statistics conference from the Consortium of Undergraduate Statistics Education. I don't know, something like that. But they had a, a competition for you could submit a joke, a song, a poem, a, something fun related to data. And I was sitting at the playground, watching the kids play, thinking through possible data jokes, submitted a couple, and I actually won first prize. And my colleagues are the first to ask you how many people actually submitted a joke, Evan, that you won first prize. But I did won first prize. I got a nominal cash prize, which made me technically a professional statistics comedian. And I just absolutely wore that title out, just telling jokes all the time and the cornier, the better, thinking up new statistics jokes, sort of had this like bootstrap audience of my 
colleagues that I just tell jokes all the time and my poor wife and kids that just have to listen to these jokes all the time. But eventually I, I got enough that yeah, I thought this was this was good. I can share with some clients and I'm in front of clients pretty often already and open with a few stats jokes. And then the joke portion got longer and longer, got a higher proportion until I thought, you know, maybe I just do this regularly. And so last year uh, at Machine Learning Week is a conference and that I was speaking at, actual machine learning uh, talk, but I, but I offered, hey, I can tell some jokes too, if you want. And so actually that conference was the first time outside of elder research clients that I pulled some data science jokes and it went well enough that I want to keep doing it and people have invited me to do it some more. So conferences, universities, clients that that want to, to spruce up a team meeting, I like to come in and get things started with with a little bit of light nerd jokes. So it sounds like hopefully you still get to insert uh, data humor into your day-to-day -day analytics work too. I do, and I make an effort to, and perhaps I err on the side of too many jokes <laughs> to uh, make sure we take take seriously the work that we do. But I, I think in all seriousness, you know, we've got really smart people that I work with that d build these really great tools that help people make decisions. And it's still hard to get people to use them. And it's still hard to get people to engage in analytics and want to change the way they do things. And just like people remember more news from the, the Colbert report than they do from CNN, people remember some laughs and some jokes. And if we can make things a little bit more fun, then it can drive the more serious side of our work too, I think. So I'd love to take a look behind the scenes at your creative process. Where do you get the ideas for your jokes? I, I think sort of zoomed out. If you look at, you know, I don't have a special on Netflix yet, so you're not going to find me there. But if you go to like the top comedians that release their specials, it's a lot of jokes about their life and their experiences and the things that they actually go through. And I try to be pretty similar in that roadmap. And you know, I, I'm fortunate I'm in a position where I get to see lots of analytics projects across a pretty wide range of topics and context. And I use that as motivation for jokes. When there's a miscommunication in a meeting, I was in a sales meeting where we, we talked about SQL and in sales, I guess that's a sales qualified lead. I didn't know that. I thought it was structured query language. Um, and so it's just, okay, that funny experience that I have in the real work that I do, I uh, can turn that into a, you know, a, a four minute bit about miscommunication and analytics. And so, I, you know, I think just by virtue of the work that I do and what I'm around, I've got the context for it. We've all seen funny things. Anybody who's been in analytics or whatever your your work is where you are, there there are things that come up that are humorous. And the first instinct as a comedian might be, well, this is only funny to the small group of people who get this. Well, luckily I'm only trying to tell jokes to the small groups of people who are going to be in analytics and, and data. Uh, and so that's sort of who I'm trying to write for. I almost think of it sort of like a storm chasing where there's this stuff that's out there and I know it's going to be out there and I, I don't even really know exactly what I'm looking for. I just want to immerse myself in the experience and try to take out the, the funny bits that I can find from it. And for the process, the commute. If you're looking to get into comedy, don't shy away from a commute. You want to have a nice long drive and just force yourself to turn the radio off turn off the, listen to the informs podcast. But when you're done with that, turn the radio off and just ride in silence where the only noise is like you yelling at the other drivers occasionally. And that's like that sort of forced boredom uh, is, is when my bet, like the most frantic part of my day is when I get to the office and I, okay, quick, write down all the things that I just thought of on this, on this long commute. But the commute for for like good creative thought, I think, is a is a is a useful place to be. Well, Evan, speaking of podcasts, you also host one of your own, mining your own business. Um, I'd love to hear you, or I'd love to have you share um, some of the topics you tackle on that. Sure, I do. So this is uh, the mining your own business podcast. Is the elder research podcast. And so I'm the host. If you're looking for comedy, it's it's a. Uh, I'll try to inject a, a little bit of comedy as will the guest, but it's not a humor focused podcast. So 2016, my the president and the CEO of Elder Research wrote a book called Mining Your Own Business. And it's meant as 
a, a primer for business leaders and executives who want to implement analytics, who want to use data. So it's not super technical. It's, you know, glosses over some analytic and data concepts, but generally it's written for the business professional who wants to start using analytics. It's almost like a bridge between the, the very technical and the, the business leadership folks. And so the podcast is really an extension of that book. I have guests on sometimes very technical data science, data engineering folks, sometimes business focused sort of using analytics to help drive what they do. But the focus of all the conversations is on how to bridge that gap, how to use data science, what sort of roadblocks do you encounter? What sort of roadblocks are you trying to overcome? How do you overcome that? How do you build a team? How do you get analytics off the ground and into actual helpful space in, in your company? Okay, so we have elder research day job, stand-up comedian career, podcast, and you also have a book. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I do. I Quick aside, I, I told some jokes at a, at a conference in December last year, and I didn't mention the book at all. And Dr. Michael Rappa, who is who leads the, the graduate program where I went to study analytics, spoke after me. And he told me that I would just be a really terrible academic because I had an opportunity. I stood up in front of these people and I didn't even mention that I had a book. Like that's not, you'd be so terrible in academia. So he actually plugged my book for me and I'm still just terrible about it today. I'm so glad that you asked because I'm supposed to, Put a plug for the book in. Yeah, I as I started collecting these statistics, data analytics, nerdy jokes, uh, I just kept. I'm a data person. I kept a log of them with some with some uh, tags for each of these. And at some point, I had a pretty good number, and I thought, oh, I could put these into a book. Did a little research. You need 101 jokes to write a joke book, or a thousand and one. But I'm not going to do a thousand and one. But I, I when I made it close. That was now the goal, like get to 101 jokes. So I did, published a, published a book in, uh, it's been nearly a year. So it's called Predictable Jokes. It's 101 data-driven laughs. And I am very happy with it. Publisher didn't want to pick it up. I shopped it around a little bit. It is self-published, uh, but it's just, it's, it's a standalone joke book. It's 101 just standalone jokes ranging from the, uh, a few of which my mom will get and a few of which like you probably want a graduate degree or you're gonna ask somebody like, what what in the world is this distribution? It's ranging in nerdiness. They're all nerdy, uh, but they sort of range in technical complexity. All right, so where can listeners go to find your book? They can go to predictablejokes.com and that's where you can find the book. The book's also on Amazon, but you should go to predictablejokes.com because there you can see some recordings of me telling some jokes as well. And if you're interested in me coming out to your event or your company, then you can get in touch with me there on, on Predictable Jokes. Sounds great. We'll, we'll include a link to that in our show notes too for Thank listeners. You. So, <laughs> All right. When you aren't telling math jokes, what do you do for fun? Do you have any surprising hobbies? I have found that doing comedy is, I didn't expect it to be so much, but it has been like a, a a break for me. It has been like a reprieve, like this thing that I get to do to get away. And even though it was very much tied to my day job and what I do you know, nine to five, the preparation of a performance, the getting up on stage, uh, the, the sort of like uh, the stroke of the ego, <laughs> getting a, getting a few laughs. Um, has been really enjoyable. And even if I weren't doing analytics, I think I would try to keep doing comedy uh, in some way. I do have uh, a family with three young boys. We like to travel. We're going to wrap up this podcast. And when you listen to it, maybe I think we'll be in the Far East in, in China or Japan. So I, I like to do a lot of travel with with the family as well. And my poor family, sometimes the, like the wires get crossed and I'm telling analytics jokes with my family. We're going to be on a plane together for 13 hours and they're just, they're going to be ready. They're going to have the, the earbuds in just, yeah, good jokes. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the jokes. You'll have a captive audience to practice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, Evan, speaking of jokes, I think you know what I'm going to ask next. Can you tell us some of your favorite nerdiest math jokes? <laughs> I can. I'll tell, I'll, I'll tell a few. I submitted this, the joke that 
got me off the ground, the one mm -hmm. I submitted that won the, the first prize in this conference is, did you hear about the Bayesian that built a model to tell her when she needs to go to the dentist? And it said, said she didn't need to go for six months, but that's probably because she just had a week prior. <laughs> you want at least an undergraduate class in Bayesian statistics there for that one. Um, we'll go, I'll, I'll, I'll go with this, this one. I'm sorry, I'm not, I wasn't the audience for that, but I'm sure <laughs> there are many listeners. <laughs> pull your car, if you're listening in the car, pull over now. I don't want to be the cause of any accidents. You roll your eyes so hard that you swerve the, <laughs> the steering wheel over. And so there's a, uh, there's actually, this is a buddy of mine. He, um, He's a data analyst. He's worked. He worked in New York City, downtown, and he's feeling burned out. I think it's pretty common in this, you know, fast-paced, fast-moving environment. You're just feeling really burned out. He said, "I got to get away." So he took a long weekend and he went upstate New York, just get out of the city. And he thought it would be relaxing. He just couldn't handle it. He's walking around. It's like forest and rivers and trees, and he just didn't feel comfortable. Just, just didn't feel like his normal self. Went for a hike one day. He went walking. And there was a place where the the forest had been completely locked, totally deforested. There were no trees. And he, all of a sudden, he felt much more comfortable, much more at home. He said, wow, after the log transformation, this feels much more normal. <laughs> I got that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that's but a small taste. Listen, elder research has made their mark on uh, a target shuffling is a concept that, that Dr. John Elder invented. And it's a way to validate models and validate statistical findings. And it's super powerful. Target shuffling seems like it should be ripe for a joke. I've got all these Bayesian, all these statistics jokes, all these AI machine learning jokes. I've, I've yet to come up with a good one on target shuffling. So if the listeners have a good idea for a target shuffling joke, feel free to reach out. <laughs> I'll give attribution, I promise. All right, Evan, I'm feeling really intimidated, but I have a couple of jokes that oh, are from no. both my my own research into terrible jokes, my team, and even a little help from chat GPT. So <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I can't take credit for any of them, but if you're willing to listen, I'll share a couple. It's all about the delivery anyways. It's all, about all right. <laughs> I'm willing. Yeah, let's, all right. let's hear it. What do you call a number that can't sit still? A Roman numeral. <laughs> <laughs> all right one more one more how does a math professor plow fields with a protractor <laughs> they're so uh, <laughs> no they're great <laughs> thank you for your patience let me just mention one other thing folks that are concerned about what can get automated and what can large language models do comedy feels like a pretty safe space. ChatGPT is writing some pretty good code for me to use. It's formatting some documents really well for me. It's yet to tell a new and funny joke. So I, I feel pretty good about <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe the last human profession here is. <laughs> yes, yours were better than the ones that ChatGPT came up with by far. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Evan, I've had an absolute blast talking with you. Thank you so much for joining me and sharing a humorous side of data analytics. I can't wait to meet you in person soon at the 2024 Informs Analytics Conference. Before we wrap up, any parting thoughts or advice for our listeners on combining humor and analytics? Just do it. Just combine them. You take a serious subject and there's no more serious subject than what we see on the news. And the best way people consume news is through comedy. People consume analytics through comedy as well. So don't be afraid if you're delivering a talk, if you're teaching people, if you're presenting some analytics, don't be afraid to, to sprinkle in some jokes. Make the humor yours. That's terrific advice. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ashley. So happy to be on the show.